Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Now, I've been working with a few clients recently who have restricted what they will put in their processes and their systems because they don't want to manage the change. So I'll give you some examples. So you write in your procedure and you put in your core documents, the logs may be in a set location. You don't want to put that set location into the SOP because it's going to change. So you just say, oh, it's going to be on SharePoint. Well, it may be on SharePoint that somebody doesn't have the right access level, so they can't actually see it. But they don't know because they don't know which folder to look in. So what use is the SOP if they don't know where to look? Another one. Another one wanted to have a reduced level of detail in the SOP. Actually, I think it might have been the work instruction because they didn't want to update it if they wanted to change the system. But what's the point of standardizing your pharmaceutical SOPs or standardizing your methodology or standardizing your approach and then document it in a way that lets you change it? Well, if you've got 10 people, 20 people, 100 people working to that SOP, but the SOP doesn't give them enough detail to know, like, for example, they've, they've not done it for two months, so they want to get a quick refresher from the SOP. But it doesn't have the right information in there, all the detailed information to give them the refresher they want to make sure they've saved the files in the right location. Maybe they fill them incorrectly still. But if it's not where it's supposed to be, you're not going to get completion on time. So where do you go from there? Well, you put the detail in your SOP and look at your change management system and make sure that is efficient. Now, often you'll find that the SOPs will give you the top level for everybody. And then the people actually doing the work, the detailed instructions will be in work instructions. Now, the work instructions could be managed centrally or they could be managed locally within a team, usually giving them access to the same system of storage. Maybe it's an electronic QMS. Maybe it's a set location in the folder. Or maybe they've got a physical folder and it's signed off. But if you give them that level of autonomy, you'll increase compliance. Not because you've lost control, but because they take control of their own actions. They know when the training that they've delivered and the supporting documentation doesn't work. So then they'll change it, fix it. And you'll come back and you'll do your self-inspection and everything will be in there and you'll be able to demonstrate compliance. The problem you have if, if you don't have the level of detail to do the work in your SOPs or your work instructions or whichever document you're using, is you've got ambiguity. Now, if you've got ambiguity and you've got a lot of people doing something, well, you might get differences in the interpretation. Often the competency assessment will just have a set number of small number of questions, maybe five, maybe 10. And I've found previously that those don't necessarily relate directly back to the content of the SOP. So they're not really assessing competence against the SOP. They're just assessing your own understanding of doing the process. But what if that understanding is from when you did it in a previous company, not the current company? And you say, well, I understand change control. I understand complaints. I understand internal audits but I don't understand the way you run your internal audit system because the SOP lacks clarity and the competency assessment is generic. It's not specific to the way you run the system, the process. Then how can your pharmaceutical company standardize its methodology and be consistently compliant? We well, can't. So what do you need to do? Look at your systems, look at your processes. Make sure that you don't have people avoiding using change control because it's too hard. Make sure the change control management of change is efficient, effective. You don't want 50 signatures to change two words. Okay, maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but you still don't want five. What's the point? for a typographical update 
you have the author and approver in quality. And the approver in quality is there because they're the one that put it live in the system. Minimize complexity. Make it easy to do the job properly and you'll get compliance. Make it hard and you find that people look for ways to get around it. You have a system external to your quality management system that's not in control. And then you get observations. The risk there, of course, is you might lose your license. That's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer talking about change control and really about adopting a system that works for the business, not just the regulators. I think I've said that before. Talk to you soon. Paul Palmer. Bye-bye.